Let's not waste time with an intro. There's news from Porsche. The new 911 generation has been officially unveiled, the 992.2, more of a mid-cycle refresh, and there are some important developments. So I'll talk you through the press release and then give myself two minutes exactly to share my thoughts that you can respond to in the comments. The 992.2 will start as a 2025 model year and there are some big changes. The S, T, and Targa from anything but the GTS are gone and the headline really is the new 911 GTS, which will offer a hybrid system. That's right, the rumors were true. It's the first ever production hybrid 911 and that system is limited to just the GTS. The electric motor is integrated in the transmission, develops 40 kilowatts, and gives an additional 110 pounds of torque at idle. The flat six for the GTS has been bored out to a 3.6 liter from the 3 liter, and there's a new turbocharger with an electric motor that's mounted between the turbine and compressor wheels to help it spool much faster. That electric motor, by the way, can also generate 11 kilowatts using the exhaust gas stream. The new 3.6 liter has no wastegate or second turbo. It's a single turbo, possible thanks to the electrical assistance. The bottom line is an increase in power from the previous GTS of 59 horsepower for a total output of 532 horsepower and 449 pound-feet of torque. It being a hybrid doesn't just introduce more power but also more weight. Porsche says it is, quote, without the level of weight increase typically associated with conventional hybrid systems, but it's still 103 pounds heavier. Nevertheless, 0-60 to 60 is done with 0.3 seconds faster than the current gen GTS at just 2.9 seconds. The GTS receives standard rear wheel steering, PASM, as well as 315mm wide tires in the rear as standard to handle that added power, which is the same width as the SF90. The exhausts are also relocated to the center. The standard Carrera sees a performance bump as well. It's still a 3 liter flat 6 with two turbos, however, it gets the intercooler from the 911 turbo models and the turbos from the outgoing GTS trim. The result is a 9 horsepower bump to 388 horsepower and a 0 to 60 time that dropped by 0.1 seconds to just 3.7. There are seven different wheel designs available, including the new 911 Carrera exclusive design wheels, which offer carbon fiber blades. Aerodynamics are another point of focus for this gen. All light functions are integrated into the headlights. Gone are the lighting elements on the front bumper, giving space for larger intakes. The GTS gets five visible air flaps at the front, which are active and work with the adaptive front diffuser to manage the airflow. The rear also gets a refresh to accentuate the car's wideness. The interior gets a full update with no rear seats as standard, though they can be added back at no additional cost. A fully digital gauge cluster is found for the first time on a 911. Push to start is standard as well, on the left side, of course, it being a Porsche, and standard drive mode selection wheels for all trims. Here's the pricing list of the new trims relative to the 992.1 generation. So that's a lot of information to digest, and I'm only giving myself two minutes to respond to it, which really isn't enough time, but if I don't give myself a time, I'll talk forever and nobody wants that. So here's my two minutes right here. I'm going to start with the negative stuff so that we can hopefully end on a positive note, but here we go. I'm going to start with the interior. I am not a fan of the new design for the interior. They haven't changed the look all that much, but it being a digital gauge cluster, a push to start button, they're, they're taking away the analog feeling of the 911 and that's something that I look for in a sports car from Porsche. It feels like Porsche is just taking components from other cars, making it easier for them to produce cars on a larger scale. That push to start button is off of a Panamera. The exhaust on the base model 911 looks like it's from the Panamera as well. Those square ports, they're not real and Porsche shouldn't be doing things that aren't real. It's starting to feel a little bit too Mercedes for my taste. Also throw in the fact that there's no more manual transmission. Now maybe when they bring the SNT back, if they bring those trims back, the manual will come back with them. But at the time of this video, all of the trims for the 2025 911s will be PDK only. The performance on the base car is just not enough for me. At $120,000, if we factor in options, which you'll have to get, and tax, you're probably gonna be around $150,000, $160,000 for a car that has under 400 horsepower. It just doesn't feel like enough to me when you can get an Audi R8 for pretty much the same price and that's a full-blown supercar. The base cars are starting to make less and less sense to me. By contrast, now the positive part, the GTS makes a whole lot of sense. 
It is a more expensive car, of course, but the performance figures are really entry-level supercar territory. We're talking about a 0-60 to 60 time of sub-3. That's Lamborghini, Huracan, McLaren, Artura territory in a 911. I also like the central rear exhaust. I think that looks really good. They did that for the 991.2, and I'm glad to see it back for this new generation. Overall, I think the GTS is really a great car. I think that the 911 is headed in a good direction. It should have more power, but I'm sure that Porsche is doing this on purpose to leave space for the Turbo and Turbo S. But there's my time right there. Let's go ahead and shut this off. Those are my thoughts. Leave me a comment down below with your thoughts on the new 911 generation, what you like, what you dislike. But I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.